What's going on everybody? Steven here with Wilson Mining. Today we're gonna to be taking you through just our first two setups. The first one that we had in our mom's basement with just one S19, super basic, um, just get you off the ground type of a setup. And then Eric's gonna be diving all the way into our immersion setup that we had down in Iowa. He's gonna run you through all the specs, all the equipment that we used and everything like that. It's gonna be super technical. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment down in the comment section and we'll make sure to get back to you if anything doesn't quite make sense. And I'm gonna let Eric take it away from here. So this was our, uh, our home mining setup. Obviously we had the uh, thermometer, of course, to make sure we weren't running too hot. This was our, uh, our trip light PDU. It does about 5.7 kilowatts. Uh, so it's got two sides to it. Each side can do 24 amps. So what we had was obviously we had one you know, one side of the miner on one, and then the other one, and obviously C13 to C14 for the, for our uh, S19. And then that would hook up to, here's a few of our fans that we would have for, just to get some airflow. And then we had an L630P plug, obviously plugged into an L630R on a, 30 amp 240 volt breaker and that was our first home mining setup so this is our 100 kva transformer well it's not actually ours it's the power company's but anyway, it's 100 kva 120 240 so just your normal residential type of transformer and uh, it can run 600 amp through it and here is our 600 amp main panel this is obviously our 600 amp main breaker and all these other breakers are about 200 amps they're for the drying system we have for the grain bin site that we're on location we're on these three bottoms uh 200 amp breakers are for our mining setup and obviously those wires are run underground through the side of the shed through there and here are the three 200 amp panels we have four 1050 R's on each one along with of course some normal outlets for accessory equipment like that. Each 1050 R is on its own 50 amp 240 volt breaker. And then obviously some of the accessory equipment is on just normal 120 volt breakers. And then our one pump is on a 15 amp 240 volt breaker. And these are PDUs. There's ASIC mining panels, basic. The only problem is there's no internal breakers in here, so if you do have a short to power, you will start melting wires. That is the only thing I don't like about these, but they were very cheap and they work very well. You can plug in. We were running, we were doing immersion cooling, so we had our miners over clock, so we could only do two miners per PDU, but they can handle 40 amp continuously, which is good for three maybe four miners depending on your overclock and then of course they had the right plugs for the miners so this is our setup here at wilson mining we have uh this is the well water inlet and that's our water descaler because obviously well water is very hard and we did not want it clogging up our uh heat exchangers so anyway the well water comes in it's 55 degrees all year round comes in gets split off Half the well water goes to this heat exchanger, and then the other half goes to that heat exchanger. So as you can tell, we have four heat exchangers in total. They are five by 12, 100 plate heat exchangers. Here, let me get closer and show the specs. We liked them a lot. And there is specs of them. So how our whole system works is obviously immersion fluid gets sucked out by your 100 gallon per minute pump here. I really like that. Continuous duty does a great job. And then obviously it gets split off. So each side of the tank is split into its own section. So immersion fluid comes through the first heat exchanger, which is connected to the dry cooler. And 
there is our dry cooler. And so that fluid is usually at air temp. And then after the first heat exchanger, it goes to the second one. And then obviously goes back into the tank. And then same thing on the other side. Let's pump through the first heat exchanger, connect to the dry cooler, comes through the second one, and back into the tank.